Today's American Story with Bob Dotson comes from Kansas, where four girls in a small town discovered someone very special hiding in history's shadows. She's a woman a world away who saved the lives of 2,500 children and is now on the list for a Nobel Peace Prize. The keys to history's treasures are often found in unexpected places. This one turned up in a tiny Kansas town, unlocking a story half a world away. To my dear and beloved girls, very close to my heart. Arena Sendler saved 2,500 children from the Nazi death camps during World War II. She saved her story 60 years for the first child who asked why she risked her life. My parents have taught me that if someone is drowning, one always needs to give a helping hand and rescue them. Megan Felt and her friends were putting together a play for their high school history club and found a brief mention of Mrs. Sendler. It's like it took a hold of us and we couldn't quit. We wanted to know more. We wanted to dig deeper. So they went to Poland to meet her. That's a beautiful picture. And this is the high school play she helped them write. Isaac, Hannah, this nice lady is going to take you someplace safe. In 1940, the Nazis walled off a neighborhood near Irina Sendler's home in Warsaw, pressed almost a half a million people into an area the size of New York Central Park with not enough food to keep them alive. 5,000 were dying each month. Sendler, a Catholic nurse, bluffed her way inside. We can walk right past the German officers. I lost no time on reflecting, knowing that I and my heart had to be there to come to the rescue. She's only five feet tall. She's less than five feet tall, yes. And she's walking out of the, out of the ghetto with gunny sacks and driving out hygiene trucks with babies sedated. The tiny ones she'd put in boxes and sometimes they would make noise, but she had a dog sitting beside her. What did she do in order to cover up the cries? If they got close to the child, she would hit the dog on the paw and it would start to bark and cause chaos, so they had to let her go through. Children, you take my hands. She took the children to Catholic families who agreed to raise them as their own, but wrote their real names on cigarette papers and put them in a jar, which she buried beneath an apple tree across the street from the Nazi barracks. I know you were not the mother of that child. One day, Irina Sendler was betrayed, arrested, both her feet and legs broken, almost murdered. But she never revealed where she'd taken the kids. After the war, she quietly dug up the jars and, true to her word, began returning the children to surviving relatives. One person has the ability to change people. Mrs. Sindler had a question for you girls. She wondered why you would care when you came from a place that didn't have a Jewish family for miles and miles and miles. Race, religion, creed, it didn't matter to us. What mattered was good can triumph over evil. Mrs. Sindler bid them goodbye with a bit of advice. Become like the farmers back here in Kansas, she said. Don't sow seed for food, sow the seeds for good and try to make that circle of good around you bigger and bigger every day. This will all end someday. So the curtain never came down on their little play. Sign your name, please. Not even after they graduated, got jobs, got married. We're trying to repair the world. Norm Kennard, their high school history teacher, has watched them perform in more than 200 schools. They're reaching over the walls of bias and prejudice that adults could never attempt to reach over. Telling the tale of a 97-year-old woman that might have been lost forever had it not been for some small-town kids intent on rescuing the rescuer's story. I can only follow the need of my heart. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in Uniontown, Kansas. Beautiful story.